Hi everyone, it's Alex. Welcome back to the second episode of the Wolseo Partner Talks, where experts from our partner network share their knowledge about the latest trends in the industries, common challenges, and ways to overcome them. And of course, we're always sharing some exciting tips and tricks on how you can elevate your communication strategy. Today's guest, I'm very excited to welcome Joseph Rice. I hope I'm pointing to the right direction. V of Partnerships at ScreenCloud, a digital signage software company that helps organizations build connected workplaces and workforces using screens that communicate. Hi, Joe. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hello. How are you? Good. Good. Fun fact about Joe is that he actually spent almost eight years working at Twitter, now known as X. So we have both a digital signage and social media expert with us today. And honestly, as a for, for a marketer who's working for a social wall company, I couldn't wish for a better match for an interview. Our focus today is mastering digital signage content. And it's been proven by multiple researchers over the year over the years that effective internal communications motivate employees to become more engaged in the workplace. And digital signage is first and foremost a communication tool. So I'd like to start our conversation by asking you what makes digital signage content different from other content formats in the internal communication mix and what HR professionals should keep in mind when they're mapping out a content strategy for the digital screens. Absolutely. So I think, obviously, the communication strategy will depend a lot on the who and, and the where, the type of, type of people that you are trying to communicate with and where you can reach them. Our focus at ScreenCloud and digital signage has been mainly focused on what we call the the undesk population or the frontline workforce. That's that's the 80% of, of workers who don't sit behind a computer every day. And therefore, may lack access to 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 company comms and information, productivity, dashboards, you know, you name it. And and so our focus is helping get that content, important content comms, up on screens to support with productivity, efficiency, and ultimately, uh, you know, employee satisfaction. So it's 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 not just one thing, not just digital signage. It's it's many channels, obviously. But again, the challenge is that a lot of our customers face is that they're their employees don't have access to to tools, computers, tablets. Oftentimes, these people don't necessarily even use their phones very much, uh, so they lack access to apps. And so, the the comp our our competition sometimes is printed paper and word of mouth and bulletin boards where things are tacked, you know, onto the wall or printed out and taped to the wall. So we're trying to improve employee comms. And I think digital signage in particular is is so important because it does complement how people store and recall information and stories. And so this kind of gets into the the you know the neuroscience of of information, how we encode, how we uh, memory encoding, and and how we retrieve things. So we talk a lot about screen cloud about ambient messaging. This idea that you want you want things up on screens that are colorful and simple to read are easier for us to encode and and to remember that complements than other information sources whether it could be in an app you know sometimes companies employees have well, informal WhatsApp groups, which is not not great for employers because they can't necessarily monitor that. But those things have tended to crop up because there was a lack of other comms. So with digital messaging, yeah, we want we want it to be up in front. We we want it to have ways to send people back into apps and tools that they use via the use of QR codes, so they can read more information, fill out an employee satisfaction survey, apply for benefits employee benefits, you know, you name it. So yeah, that's just a little bit of our focus. And, and I think, again, the importance of, of of screens that communicate. So you mentioned deskless workers, and for sure, they're busy people, and their business is unlike any other workers, like in the office or remote employees. So considering their unique work environments, that, as you said, they don't have immediate access to digital devices of communication. What do you think are some like innovative examples maybe some cool examples of content that can be displayed on digital signage screens to engage and motivate deskless workers in particular? Sure. Yeah, th th there are many, and, and I think it comes back ultimately to the, the, the objective the company has, the challenge, the comms challenge, if you will, or the behavior they want to change. So 
in some instances, you know, it, it's health and safety are very important. If there's been incidents of, of workplace injuries, health and safety issues, then obviously that that is paramount, taking care of your employees. Uh, and, you know, what we've seen um, some of our customers do in, in manufacturing logistics settings is, is, is be very thoughtful about the messaging, about, you know, wear your hard hat, uh, messaging of training opportunities that exist, and then being able to to benchmark the before and after. So you know we were we, this this many sort of injuries um, before, and then after the messaging, um, we saw it we saw a drop off in in those injuries. Obviously, now attribution can be difficult. Hopefully, they're doing a whole host of things to reduce kind of health and safety issues. But you know, that attribution we we can work through and help our customers on the attribution there and, and, and cause and effect and, and, and kind of get back to the, the value add of why communicating health and safety is so important. In other instances, the use case is more around employee attrition and focusing on messaging on, on support that the, the support and benefits that the, the employer offers to employees. We've had one case here in the UK, a large retailer that was going on a hiring spree and they wanted to help the, have their employees help with referrals. And so we were able, able to put up the referral scheme and remind employees that the referral scheme exists. And I think in that instance, they were getting like a, I think it was a 500 pound bonus for any any referral that signed on to join, join the company. Now there are instances it's about career progression. And so a lot of times employers, uh, frontline employers don't necessarily know about career opportunities, a chance to move up or over to a new department. So again, making those things real, you know, up, up on a screen really, really helps the uptake and, and people. So we can clearly see that when the referral scheme was was posted or people were reminded of the referral scheme's existence, we saw referrals increase in the coming, the, the, the following weeks. So there really is impact there to the, to the, to having this information front and center. I love the second example that you gave because it's always amazing to see your products in action and how customers are using it to achieve their own goals. It's always mesmerizing to to witness that. But whenever we are thinking about content and especially when it comes to deskless employees, we live in a world where we're surrounded by information and it can cause a certain degree of information fatigue and we won't I feel like we really want to avoid that in the workplace because we just want to make sure people can focus on their work. So my next question was with digital signage strategy, what's the optimal frequency and duration for updating digital signage content to maintain this engagement without causing this content fatigue among employees? Mm, yeah, that's a great one. It's something we work a lot with customers on on figuring out their own their own content plan, but a content plan focused very much on specific screens and their location, and also the the types of people that are uh, in front of that screen. So you know a, a break room or a canteen or cafeteria screen it ha- probably has a different slightly different comms strategy strategy than one in the lobby versus one in the, on the shop floor, the, the warehouse, the loading bay. And so, you know, we, we, we encourage our customers to be kind of thoughtful about our, who are the types of people working in this place? What kind of information that do they need to be successful? Uh, and then we, you know, we go from there. So it may be that, for example, in a, in a, in a loading bay on the shop floor, it might be more KPI dashboard focused as opposed to employee benefits and whatnot, it could be, but it, it, it might be more around the, the, the job they're doing right then and there, and probably some health and safety reminders. Whereas if they go into the, they take a break and they go in the break room, that might be a place more to talk about benefits, message from the, the, the CEO, any company news, something that might be slightly longer form factor. Now, you know, we always encourage people not just to take a document and try to put it up on a screen that wouldn't be screen ready. So, you know, one of the things that that screen cloud solution does is make content screen ready. So we, we take that, we, we for, reformat it, render it for a screen, resize the image, the, the title, the summary. So we clean that up and make it more adaptable to, to the screen, whether it's vertical or horizontal. So we kind of take that 
that that challenge away from our our customers adapting it to the situation obviously so yeah i think for us you know that that blend really again depends on on the, the the location and the kind of personas what we do know is that if you have the same thing on a screen it becomes it becomes you know quite static and people start to ignore it so you do need fresh content just as a, t- a channel, a television program has co- changing content. You, you do need to think about that as well when it comes to your, your digital signage. Mm. What would be more of a general approach to tracking digital signage KPIs? For, for example, for companies that just starting the digital signage journey and they don't know what they're doing and they haven't really mapped out the target audiences, what would you recommend for those? Yeah, I think I would probably focus more on, I mean, I think there there are leading and and lagging indicators. Signage can impact things. I think digital signage can impact employee experience, employee satisfaction, but employee satisfaction is a very broad thing. And the many things impact employee satisfaction, obviously, so not just signage. So the impact, the output you want, long-term impact of, of digital signage is better comms. And I think better comms does improve employee experience, which improves employee satisfaction. So you can see how it, you know, it ripples. But as a starting point, I think brands, organizations should focus and be more, more thoughtful on specific things they want to see before and after. So that could be, um, that could be a, an HR people team saying, we'd like to get, improve the the number of employees who complete the the annual biannual employee satisfaction survey, right? That's crucial information for them to understand what their employees think. And, you know, if it's been historically 25, 30% of employees complete the survey, you might say, we want to focus on communicating, pushing the message that people should help help us help you by completing the employee satisfaction survey. And we want to go from say 20% to 35%. Um, completion rates on the on the satisfaction survey. So that's that's just one way that you can say we you know we want to we'll measure the impact of signage via employee involvement in the, in the survey. Uh, another could be another simple one on the shop floor could be attendance in 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 say optional optional training sessions. So if you know you tend to only get a certain percentage of employees attending these these trainings, seeing that number increase would be be very impactful and then obviously have it hopefully have an impact later on health and safety incidents in the workplace so those are just two i think there are many more but you get the idea uh, of things that are more trackable more leading indicators of of that the signage program is having having an impact yeah so circling back to the fact that digital signage is a communication tool basically we, we measure how well the communication was to deliver a certain message yeah. Now, circling back to your social media background, I promised in the beginning that I'm going to touch point on this. How do you think social media can be integrated into digital signage strategy? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think the when it when it comes to, to to social content up on the walls, digital signage, I think nothing's more powerful for employees, whether they're frontline, office space, backline, whatever you want to call them, but but seeing real customer feedback. So, you know, you can call that user generated content, customer generated content, whatever you want to call that. But I think that is real. And, and you know, it gets back to the reason that the, the, the company is in business is how they add value to their to their customers. And I think it's really critical that employees see that and they the good, the, the good, the bad, the ugly uh, of how their product or service is being received. I think that's incredibly motivational for for employees to see that you know to see that value and, and hear it from individuals who use that product or service you know in their daily lives. So, and I've always I've always felt social is so impactful because it's people talking about their experiences using products and services at the, at the moment they're using them usually. So it is really it's rich. It's really emotive. It's it's not a not asking them to um, respond in a survey weeks after they've had the experience. So there, there's something that's that's quite powerful about that kind of in the moment, real time feedback. And, and that can then be shared with, with employees to help them improve products or give them that extra motivation that, hey, people are really enjoying this thing that we do. So that that's that's the you know what I call the customer consumer gener- generated content. Obviously much more helpful in a in a B 
to C setting than a B to B, where maybe you see less of that. But I do think then employees sometimes are a little bit far away from corporate messaging. And, and I think it's nice for them to see the 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 company personality shine through in their outreach to customers. So that's also can be a lot of fun. And I think, you know, you you companies should use social to have a personality. And that that social can be one of the best ways for that to 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 shine through. I think I'm going to steal the use social to create a company personality for our future marketing material Uh because I just love the concept. And I totally agree that the authentic in the moment feedback that wasn't forced or even maybe encouraged by anything other than a positive experience is, is the best, one of the best employee recognition tactics that HR can set up. Next question is for Joe, who is the VP of partnerships in Screen Cloud. I assume you know all about Screen Cloud apps and integrations. So what is your what are your top three Screen Cloud apps or digital signage apps for employee engagement? Could be surprising ones. If it's if if one of them is weather, <laughs> I'm not going to <laughs> surprise you. In. Yeah. Oh gosh, you put me in the spot. Well, I guess one, this has not been planted, but I I I I I do love seeing our customers display walls content, walls IO content for the reasons just just mentioned. I think that's 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 incredibly powerful. Again, in B2C environments, especially where people get a real sense for the you know how what people think about their their product. That's one. Certainly, certainly things like weather and stock price and traffic, those are those are common things. Everybody has an interest. They always want that. Yeah. I mean, I think the other things that are can be really crucial actually depend a lot on the industry and what it is that that company does. So, you know, if it is, if it's, we have some, we work with some companies in, in oil field services. So their health and safety are really paramount. And so, you know, that to them really is crucial talking about training. And we know that in some frontline organizations, employee attrition is very high. So it's, they're, they're constantly recruiting. They can't find the people. And so the ability to, to leverage the workforce to help bring in good talent is, is hugely important to them in that instance. So being able to message job opportunities, the referral scheme, career, career development opportunities is really important. I think comms, comms will always be important. So the ability to connect to, to the comms tools, the Unilees and first steps and, and that sort of thing is, is really crucial as well. So I, I, I don't know if I give a, you know, really specific apps, but, but I think, I think there's a mix of content that's, that's really important. It's important for, again, for organizations to think through what that playlist, so to speak, is for, for their, for their teams. And looking a little bit into the future, let's play oracles. Are there any emerging trends or technologies in digital signage world that you believe will transform the way that companies communicate with their their employees? I mean, I think our CEO Mark's really good at at thinking out and how you can adapt the messaging right right people right place right time sort of thing and people talk uh, one of the challenges you have in big organizations especially organizations that are are global and and therefore have obviously people reading um different languages is is how do you message how do you do that kind of translation to 10 different offices in 10 different languages so some some of the work we're doing now no surprise i but it's so hot right now but it's just thinking about how we can use some of these plugins chat gpt and others to to do that kind of translation so that you know people who who may not speak english can get that get the message literally figuratively so i think that's one thing i think also you know down the road what you may see is uh, this idea of you know the ability for for signage to be aware of who's around and to adapt messaging based on that you know we do carry most employees do carry around badges that that allows them to tap in and out to check you know check in or out for their shift and move around the building that would provide some situational awareness and that we could potentially read and and then be able to say okay if this sort of maybe not individual i don't think you'd ever want to be able to necessarily focus a specific message but you might be able to say you know if we have a lot of a lot of people from this team in the canteen at this time perhaps the messaging is slightly altered to to reach them as opposed to someone who's works in the warehouse. So, you know, there's some things like that. I think that we can, 
we can do and we'll be working on thinking through to help deliver a more, you know, a more personalized message. That sounds so sci-fi, but in a good way. Yeah. Still have to think about GDPR and, and mm. honestly, personal identi- personal identi- identifiable information, those those issues. But yeah, I think there's there's certainly ways to use technology to do better better targeting for better ultimately better impact of the of the messaging. Yeah. What do you think about facial recognition? If we're going deep into technology and AI, when you follow digital signage news, a lot of people are talking about facial recognition, especially maybe not in the workplace, but in retail to also customize the message depending on a person's demographics, gender, whatever they can read from the from the facial recognition. What's your take on that? Is it is it is it good or is it bad? Are we moving there? <laughs> Well, I, I I think it's both. I think it depends on how it it's used and it, where that data could be stored and how it could be used. I guess it's one thing if I'm in a shop and it it it's able to decipher I'm a man, I'm probably this age, maybe this would look good on me. And that that's probably information I would be interested in knowing. But but then there's always that question of well, what else is information being used for? Could it be hacked? Yeah, I don't particularly like the idea of, of being recognized everywhere I go and tracked everywhere I go. Maybe some some people have a different perspective. I, I think that sort of technology certainly will be powerful in in a retail setting, out of home advertising, especially where you know they they're selling time, they're selling an ad slot based on who they think is going to be around. So the ability to pick an ad slot that is relevant to those people will allow them to charge more for that ad that ad slot. You know, for us though, again, we're focused more on internal comms. So it'll be more about how do we just ensure that the, the right employees are getting the, the information they need to be happy, productive, efficient, you know, employees. And that wraps it up beautifully. So the future is looking bright for digital energy <laughs> in the employee space, right? But- we hope so. Certainly, certainly, it is an important part of the comms mix, and one that I think is historically a little bit of an afterthought. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's not the only channel, but it's an important one. And I think again, this idea of the the ambient messaging does complement other channels quite well. And again, it's an area we'd like to continue to work with the Walls team on getting social and that content, news generated content, up on up on screens. And that's a wrap. Thank you everyone for watching this video. And if you have some questions to Screen Cloud or any other walls of your partner, feel free to leave them down below and we'll be sure to address them in the next episodes of Walls of Your Partner Talks. Until then, see ya. <laughs>